I, I should warn you all about that, but Mike, so I, I've had a, a weird Star Wars podcast for like 14 years. And on that show, like my personality is I'm kind of an asshole. So my co-host Whoa, is the nice guy. Revolutionary. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm always like poking at people and like trying to like <laughs> to implying poke at me. things I they don't say. Fun. I, yeah, no, I'll, I, I can I'll, tell you could roll with it, but yeah, I can roll. <laughs> well, well, speak of, uh, things that think rolling with it what if like uh a little child was holding a hot dog at the beach and he dropped it and it rolled into the ocean that'd be a frank ocean and that's the guy we're going to talk about on the, today's episode i've been meaning to listen to that like remember that record that you bought me like two years ago well i just remember that it's sitting in the closet so I called you up just to tell you I've been meaning to listen to who's that? I've been meaning to listen to who's that? Why don't you come over and talk about it? Ooh, 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 ooh. Why don't you come over and talk about it? <laughs> I've been doing this five years. Uh, <laughs> First, it's Brat Summer. Now it's Frank Ocean Summer. Yeah. When are we going to do Burger <laughs> Summer? <laughs> like, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, call me when it's Frank Brat. Um, but hey, everybody. Welcome. Honest Brat, I guess. Um, but hey, everybody. Welcome to Ivan Mean. Honest to Brat. <laughs> yeah, that's what that's. That's what I got. Um, I, 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 I don't I, even understand it though. It's a Frank Ocean. It's a it's a wait, but it doesn't uh, even make sense. But I changed. Oh, the, instead of Frank, like let me let me be Frank. Yeah, let me be Frank. It's like honest <laughs> brat. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> honest brat. Um, body okay, of keep water. Going, keep going, keep going. Yeah. <laughs> Um, we have a guest here. He's a famous YouTuber. Uh, he's been on here five times. He's one of my favorite YouTubers. Uh, it's Professor Sky from Professor Sky's Record Review. He's back. Yay. Hey. Hey. <laughs> great, great to be back. I, I always enjoy seeing you in my live comments because I, I never know, like you've never allowed me to call you anything less than Andrew Ambrose. So I always get excited because every comment, I always say Andrew Ambrose. Yeah. When yeah, I hear yeah. other people call you other things, I get like a little bit suspicious. Like, when am I going to get like single name? I just like sport? never corrected you. Like, I just <laughs> like, I think you just like, um, but yeah, that uh, your channel is like, one of my favorites, uh, one of my favorite music reviewers. And I really, you, the last time we talked, uh, you said you never listened to Frank Ocean's Blonde. And it's true. Blonde is one of my top four, five, 10 albums of all time. And it's just like been in the chamber of like, okay, we're eventually going to talk about this. And I feel like this was a perfect opportunity to do so. Oh, but before we talk about that, I'm Andrew Ambrose Lee. I'm Michael Lomitato. I'm Harper Thompson. And I'm Stanley Philippe. So let's talk about Frank Ocean. Let's start. Let's just start right away. Like, um, what is y'all's preconceived notion and history with Frank Ocean? I'll go. Um, yeah. I uh, so like I mentioned, uh, I was very into Gorilla versus Bear in high school, um, and so definitely. Wait, what I is that? Gorilla vs. Bear, it was like a music blog that had like um, lots of like new independent music and hip hop. And um, it, they would do these monthly mixes of just like kind of like a block of about of an hour of music um, kind of loosely transitioned into each other. And so mm. I would just download those and listen to that. And that was kind of how I was finding new artists for you it's know, a still couple of years. It's still, it's still yeah. active. Yeah, Girl vs. Spare is still there. I just haven't really visited the site in about a decade. Um, but yeah, I, I really liked that and used that as a source for, uh, you know, music. And so that's where I found most of Odd Future. Um, and so I was really into Frank Ocean and Earl Sweatshirt back then. That was Those were kind of my entry points. Um, I, I feel, and I could be wrong about this, but I feel like that like... Frank Ocean cover of Strawberry Swing was maybe yes. on one of those mixes. And so yes. that was oh kind God, of when I was so getting good. into, yeah, that was around that time. Um, and then Channel Orange came out in 2012 and, um, you know, really cute. Me and my boyfriend uh, really bonded over Channel Orange because Aww. that was when we we met uh, in 2012 as well. So there were lots of late nights, you know, just scream singing Bad Religion, uh, <laughs> you know, very yeah. cute. Um 
That's a cute Harper. Your channel orange is mine. Hayden's Drag Race All Stars Four. For <laughs> <laughs> equivalent artistically, yes, yes, yes I totally think so. True. Um, yeah. So then, uh, yeah. And then I was very excited for blonde to come out. Um, except for first endless came out. I don't know if we're going to get into that, but I tried a a little bit, but I tried really hard to watch endless on Apple that day that it came out. I was like, I had, you know, I have Apple products and I have an Apple ID and I felt like I really should have been able to have, you had that U2 album that was in there too. uh Yeah. I had the automatically downloaded U2 album and I was like, why can't (laughs) I watch endless by Frank Ocean? But then the next day blonde came out and I was like, well, I have this album and I stopped trying very hard to watch endless. So I've never seen endless. Um, uh, but big fan of blonde. Um, this is like a huge, a huge, huge album for me, for sure. Fantastic. Uh, let's turn to Michael. Where are you at with this guy? Yeah, uh, Frank Ocean to me. So this was exactly uh, kind of on track with my kind of college career. 2012 was when Channel Orange came out. I started college in 2014. Uh, so that was like people had picked it up and were like jazzed for Frank Ocean, I felt like. And then a second album came out um, and it was very much um, music I pretended to like. So mm-hmm. that way I could <laughs> uh, get in with people that I liked. Uh, it was not it is not music that I gravitate toward autonomously i find especially because i went to a christian college i i feel like i associate him with this like masculine vulnerability that i find kind of uh exhausting uh because i associate it with uh that type of guy at a christian college um uh, I, this he, is like he, gay people, gay music for straight no, people, kind I, of like yes, thing. You know? yes. like, so that's that's part of Brock why Hampton it's like hard this for too, a little bit. Yeah, I bounce off of it, and there are so many, so many, so many, so many gay people I know and friends of mine that love Frank Ocean. And he's really speaks to them in their life. That per, that is not me, but I it came coming at this with another fair shot. So this is probably yeah, like my yeah. fifth or sixth time listening to Blonde. Fantastic, so. uh, Steadman. Well, uh, trying out new nicknames what, what's your deal yeah, i like it i like it i mean yeah I, I don't know i like everybody else like off future was a thing that kind of i listened to and hovered around and knew of frank but really i guess was introduced properly to frank on watch the throne i uh, just hear him saying that that opening line um was great uh and then i was like man like who is this guy and then uh Channel Orange is one of the CDs that I covet. Like I have a, about 20 CDs that I still play on rotation in my car. And and Channel Orange is definitely one of those. And I think because I loved it so much, I didn't really like get so excited about Blonde. Like there was enough time where I was like, you know what? If it doesn't come out again, it's okay. And then when Blonde came out, I was like, yeah, this is good. But I was like, I'm playing Frank in my CD player. I'm not going to listen to Frank on my Spotify. So I was still very attached to to channel orange um this has made me appreciate obviously blonde a lot more given the time to do a deeper dive into it so i'm excited to, to talk about it but but frank is one of those like real artists like really unique and fearless and and inspired by by some folks and and has inspired a lot of people so yeah excited to talk about so, this. Album. some might say too many <laughs> totally forgot yeah. suddenly about uh um, watch the throne no church in the wild i that song is so good mm-hmm. i'm not that we're doing and kanye west today but boy, oh boy. <laughs> we're gonna transition i i was such a big frank fan that I didn't care about the Jay-Z and Kanye features at the time. I only cared about that. And like, um, but let, let's, let's talk to the professor. This is the longest time you've haven't talked ever. <laughs> like, yeah, that's true. <laughs> Statistically, that's true. <laughs> ever. Yeah. Being a teacher, a dad and a YouTuber means I yeah. never stop talking. I <laughs> said like I sent a friend of mine one of your videos and she uh. was like, this guy loves to talk <laughs> like this yeah. guy loves. To- That's <laughs> crazy to say about a YouTube video. Like, what do you want me to just like? <laughs> yeah. Oh, I get so many comments like way to yap. It's like you saw how long the video was. You know what I'm talking about. <laughs> I <laughs> don't start a YouTube video if it's not longer than 15 minutes. I just yeah. want to say. Good. <laughs> That's what I'm looking for. Like, so 15 yeah. minute YouTube videos are the quibbies of today. Like, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> 
I guess I now understand. Oh, yeah. I guess that was the same guy. Because the first time I listened to Frank Ocean was this morning at uh, 8.02 uh, at the YMCA while watching Halloween H2O uh, on mute. So that was like literally the first time in my entire life I've sat down and listened to Frank Ocean. Now that I've listened to that entire album all day, you know, probably five, six times, like, I'm like, oh yeah, that's the Made in America voice, and obviously I love that. Oh my voice. God, your and, and, cover's really good. <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, according to Michael, I shouldn't sing, but hey, um, <laughs> I but, stand. Ag stand Cook, by it. not even me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Those are the guys who are allowed to sing. Ag Cook is only allowed to sing because of his tangential relationship to Charlie. I do yeah. want to say, but yeah, so so you know that I mean. There's two artists who I get the most requests to review in terms of old music. And I think it makes sense because most of my audience are sort of like either old Gen Z. I mean, young millennials are old Gen Z. And there's like this, students from Michael's college also. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Literally. So I, yeah. And so I like so everyone's dying for my death grips take because that's like the most important music apparently of all time um which i will review when fantano releases the other video that we did together because that's where we talked about death grip together but it's been like three years so i don't know if it's ever happening uh and then and then the other one is blonde like i, I get so many comments i've probably gotten like 30 or 40 and only 20 of those were andrew and, <laughs> um but you know i get a lot of comments you know you need to go back and see it and then i listened to it and then just all day it was like Oh, fuck. Oh, I get it. Oh, all that stuff that I thought was someone else was just him. huh? So <laughs> that's that's the sense that I get. I, I, I was really just very pleased, just amazed the whole way through. Like, you know, sometimes you listen to music and you're like, oh, yeah, this is going to be a part of my life forever. Like I had that feeling listening to the album. So um, I, wow. I was happy about that. And, and now I sort of wish like I should have listened to them before, but I'm, I'm glad I saved it for this. So, well, uh, what was like... Um what was the um, what was the pause of just either checking it out on your own or um, reviewing it? Like what was I know you had your mid mid 20s music death and stuff like that, right. the period where you just didn't listen to any music. Um, right. But what was like the hesitation if you had any? So, I mean, it's a weird thing and, and where like one thing is that if I know an artist is still active, then he's going to come back. And it's actually a really fun thing. This guy, when, maybe not. <laughs> yeah, yeah, maybe not him. I, he had some kind of like show at Coachella where he was on ice skates. I don't, I didn't follow the story that carefully. I don't know what happened, but I didn't get upset. But um, he did. Like, if I know an artist <laughs> is still active and they're huge and important, I actually, it's like a, a thought experiment to be like, you know, what if you are 1973 and it was like, I've never listened to the Beatles and band on the run just came out by Paul McCartney. I'm going to listen to Paul McCartney having never listened to the Beatles. And like, what would you get out of that? And that's my basic idea. So with Frank Ocean, it's like, I was looking forward to reviewing whatever he comes out with next. And then just mm -hmm. being like, I don't know. I've never heard these other songs. I know he's on a couple of Kanye tracks. That's cool. And then like having that sort of naivete, which I really like, is one of my favorite things about music. Cause <laughs> You, we're just we're hopeless like how can we possibly know all this great music that's out there so i, I was sort of trying to, to hold on to that uh and then just you know i have so little time to listen to music because i'm listening to so much music all the time and watching but, halloween h2o like on yes the elliptical. yes, <laughs> like, yes. <laughs> um this yeah. is me listening by the way to uh the beatles after only hearing paul mccartney oh yeah. my god these are the guys that paul mccartney jacked off with when he was younger <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I was gonna not say it, and then I still you were like to. you were like clicking, you're you're like salivating. <laughs> Wait, like, okay, Sorry, this guy's gonna I end his to. yap sesh and like, <laughs> I can get my joke off. I let him finish. I let him finish. Yeah. <laughs> that was hard. So, so did Paul. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. There you go. I'm glad, I'm glad you two are getting along. All right. Yeah. So. Like, um, so Frank Ocean for me, like he, I kind of was familiar of him through, through the odd future. Odd future was like kind of formative for me because I think it was just, I grew up in a very conservative religious household. And so anything that was like kind of like edgy and shocking was like, 
I, I like what I listened to it and I recoiled and I was like repulsed by it, but I was like fascinated by it at the same time. And I was like, this is scary. This is messed up, but also like, this is harmless at the same time. Like I, I kind of like had that. And Frank Ocean was always in the back of those songs and he was never like pr- pr- provocative in the same way. Like Tyler was, or Earl was at the time. He was like the quiet guy in the back who occasionally like busted out a solo. And I just gravitated towards him. Like I, at the time I didn't have a musical identity. Like, uh, I didn't, I didn't really listen to a lot of music beyond that. And Frank was one of the early, like, okay, I'll, I'll adopt this as part of my musical identity. And it was such a good investment. Like a lot of the artists, like, um, Eminem, I don't really listen to anymore. Uh, what's it called like childish Gambino's old stuff. I don't really like very much anymore. Like it's, it's kind of like too corny for me. And like, Channel Orange, when it came out, like it came out when I was in high school and I was getting over my first like high school crush. And then Blonde came out like when I was in college and like had a more evolved love slash like kind of limerence, limerent experience with someone. Um, but it was like more advanced than what it was in high school. And so those two albums dropped at crucial moments of my life, crucial moments of my like development of my romantic life, of my history of like heartache and heartbreak. And I, I always just had an affection and affinity for his music and his art. So I'm really excited to talk about this. I literally, I'm more afraid to say I don't like this than of any other album. And <laughs> I'm so scared. <laughs> no, no, please. Um, yeah, let's, I guess um, I want let, to talk just like very briefly about like the rollout to this album. Like the sto- I think Sky would like actually like really like this in terms of, um, so it's like Channel Orange, Watershed album. Everyone loved it, won a Grammy. Um, and then four years later, people were like anticipating this album. People were like super excited and uh Frank Ocean like had this deal to like um, like twenty million dollars to like uh, release an album exclusively on Apple, and he also wanted to get out of his label at the same time. So he released like a decoy album, Endless, um, huh. to get out of this deal, and then the next day released like um, released like Blonde like right afterwards. Oh wow! So he kind of like got got one over like over the corporations and stuff like that. Um, and Wait, yeah. is Endless good? It's 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 pretty Who good. Knows? Actually, I I like <laughs> Who it. Knows? It's it's obviously <laughs> it's it's way more strange than this. It's like but like this is also like one of the first times I like experienced a rollout while it was happening, like the because the internet one was one. Um but like on his website, he would like stream himself like building a staircase from scratch and like it was like 19 days long and I would like, I would like be at community college. I would do my classes. And then I would like watch this stream of Frank Ocean, like building a staircase. And then like, then he just like goes away and like the room is empty. And then I would like, it was like, I think it was just like a level of patience that I don't have anymore. <laughs> like that. We I don't. think a lot about those live streams, like that brat wall that they keep doing. Mm-hmm. I was like, I don't want to see the brat wall ever again. Cause I kept <laughs> tuning into it and then just seeing like gay people standing in front of the video camera while they're like painting a wall. And I'm like, this is fine. <laughs> you guys yeah, don't need yeah. to have the live stream. Um, so, so the, so like, so it was a contractual obligation kind of spite. Cause I'm, I'm fascinated by that kind of album. You guys know the story about the Rolling Stones before they started Rolling Stone records. The last song they released no. is called, oh, no, yeah. called cocksucker blues. And it's like, it went along with a movie by the photographer, Robert Frank. And it's like the craziest song. It's like, seriously, like when will I get my cock sucked? When will I get my ass fucked? I don't got much money, but I know where to spend it every time. And it was like at the end of their contract with their original thing. And they were just like so bitter and just like, you can't, I mean, you can't find it now, but like there was a period of time where like I had a, I had a cassette tape of it and it was like, do you want to hear Sea Sucker Blues, you know? <laughs> and, and yeah, cause that's, yeah, that's fascinating. I'd love to hear Endless and like, 
like see how how they play off each other because i like i seriously have no idea of any of this right like i mm-hmm. barely understand what odd future is like i've i've reviewed a lot of earl sweatshirt and a lot of tyler the creator but like i totally get that, that was super important to y'all but like to me it's sort of like yeah yeah oh it's something that people oh is that what that stupid of meant on all those hats that everyone was wearing when <laughs> yeah. i was in my third year of teaching at, at a college you know <laughs> Um, yeah, like now it, it's Orange it, Theory Fitness, by the way. If you ever oh, see yeah. OF when you're out and out, <laughs> I like the rebrand, it's like really smart. Like, I'm glad yeah. I'm like, brands have I, long, I, I guess all know? these hot people must be working out at Orange Theory. <laughs> <laughs> like, do they have an affiliate link? Is that why I need like to go before, to their bio? Like the OF logo was a donut, <laughs> and like they changed it to like Orange Fitness, and like they, I'm glad they're like getting oh, yeah, their fitness journey. Yeah, 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 they figured it out. Um, that's so funny. Okay, so let's talk about the <laughs> blonde. <laughs> like so, it will, you say it in a patronizing <laughs> way. I feel like Sidley actually enjoys my jokes. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Um, well, should we? Also, that's so funny. Yeah. Should we also say that there was a magazine that he released too mm-hmm. called Boys Don't Cry, which mm-hmm. I think had a lot of um, information that, like, when you go on Genius Lyrics to see what's up with this album, a lot of that information comes from the magazine. What's Boys up with Don't this Cry. album? Yeah, what's up with this album? And that's that's what we're here to pretty answer. Pretty much told us. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, how, yeah. how did he release the the magazine? It was like, I think he just like did, did like pop up shops. Yeah, it was just like, okay. um, oh. yeah, it was like in like five locations, and like people would. And then, like, eventually it just, like, got, like, reprinted to Reddit. Like, they just, like, did a scan of it and, like, so that right. people who didn't buy it can look at it. Um, but but yeah. he really pulled, he pulled, like, a, I mean, Sky, you like, like, Star Wars. It was, like, a Phantom Menace move, you know? Like, like he completely decoyed everyone into thinking, like, Endless was the album that we were waiting for. And then it was kind of this, like, weird project with this live stream. And you're like, okay, now what? And then the next day... Once he got his got out of his contract, he dropped Blonde, the actual album, and that that booklet that a magazine, Boys Don't Cry, had the album as well in it. So it was kind of wow. like, okay, you haven't heard from me for a long time. Boys Don't Cry was almost like Frank saying, "Here's the only interview that's gonna matter, and you can have it forever." And then the <laughs> album comes with it. You know what I mean? So, so yeah. he he really like fucked Def Jam. You should yeah. you should look into it, Scott, because I think you're yeah, gonna love. Will. The, yeah, the yeah. story behind <laughs> this like it's yeah. the reason we don't have like exclusive albums anymore yes. like exclusive like apple album he ruined right. that for everyone you know like Thank awesome god <laughs> yeah <laughs> yes <laughs> so so yeah like let's talk about themes of this album like um uh i'll i'll do a quick um i have a quick thing here um, one, this album is about falling in love with your situationship, which I've never done in my life. It truly is. <laughs> like, <laughs> like, if any album's about that, it's this album. Yeah. <laughs> um, but I actually like wrote a review of this like a year ago and I like, um, just changed a little bit of it, but I actually think it like holds up pretty well. Like, um, so I'll just read this here, um, just like to kickstart the conversation and then we could like get into themes more. So Frank Ocean not only chisels a cathedral to those grieving their youth, he provides a way out. He practices gratitude for the story that ends in heartbreak because he knows the feelings deep down are good. He's grateful that he will shown love and that he was capable of showing love himself. But I think the most helpful idea is that he fails. Sometimes peace only lasts as long as a song. He overdoses on nostalgia until he's faced with the idea that he's alone. He then attempts to find meaning in that solitude, only for every answer to fall short. He debases himself for a shred of acknowledgement, for a touch to prove he isn't a ghost, only to be met with self-control. He takes shrooms and lets himself cry. While this grief was happening, Frank was not only building a career, he was freeing himself. He promises to be a home for his failed love, but ultimately lets them roam free. He circles back to love and gratitude for the past, but also invests in himself and his future. He posits the future can be rosier than their past or present. He posits that the pain you feel will feel get so small in your rear view mirror that you'll one day convince yourself it's all good. He does so because he has no choice. Can you imagine a life where your past is good, where not only your past is good, but your future as well? Frank Ocean dares to, and we're better off for it. 
So I wrote that. So that was, um, <laughs> it's in contrast to my go, me going like, uh, so what do you think about, uh, yeah, I think, you know, like, so <laughs> <laughs> they're both great, by the way, both yeah, great. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> very well written. And you're very good at saying, oh, well, what do you think? <laughs> <laughs> they are two different skills. I agree. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, so yeah, that's, that's a good yeah, point. I really like your, your last line there. Like, the the past being good and the future be good also, you know, paying that picture. Cause a lot of times, yeah, that's what we do. And I think the, the theme, the biggest theme is duality, right? Like, I mean, we just expressed your duality in being this well-written, well-spoken person. that also sometimes fumbles on questions, but that's what makes you so great, you know, is that you have space for both those things. And Frank on this album gives space to the duality of everything. Like, 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 like sonically, there's a lot of really good stuff. A lot of, what's happening stuff. I mean, the relationships, like you said, like he's okay with failing at, at those relationships, but he'll look back and be like, wow, like there were some good moments. We'll also like, fuck you. So yeah, I think duality is a really big part of, of what drives this album and what makes it so relatable. Yeah. I feel like, um, this is not so much a theme so much as an effect. So we can hold on this for later, but I feel like the vocals on this album kind of connect to every theme that you kind of hit on Andrew. Like, hmm. so that thing of memory and also like, uh, you know, nostalgia and also duality and like identity, kind of like all of these themes, um, I feel like relate really well to the vocal effect he has where he has two voices, right? Which uh, is that in a different? That's not even on this album that I have two versions. See on both sides, yeah, like, yeah, yeah. like Chanel. But anyway, so he has these two voices that he's using: his kind of modulated, higher pitch voice and his like regular singing voice. Um, and I kind of feel, and he stacks so many vocals throughout the whole album. And I mm -hmm. feel like all of those things work together to kind of create this like, um, I don't know. It's it it. I feel like they all evoke memory where like memory is, you know, a memory of a memory of a memory where it's mm -hmm. all layered like that. Yeah. And it also is, you know, different ways of experiencing things. And it's also, you know, I don't know. So I think that that um, effect is really powerful. Mm. In, mm. in like the movie, uh, I watched Inside Out 2 the other day. And mm -hmm. it, what, how to make the emotions legible, they have to show one at a time, like the anger pushes a button and the Riley gets angry, like then disgust presses a button. Then she does something like, like, oh, uh, like she kind of winches, winces and stuff. But in reality, it's just like all these things stacked on each other all the time. And you're like feeling it's not even duality. It's like hundreds of strands of duality happening at the same time. And memory the way like memory works is like you don't actually like have to tell yourself the memory like once upon a time I went to the store and I went to, you just like know it and it informs how you um, think and what your beliefs are. And I think this album is like reckoning with all the contradictions and the wires crossed with all that. So so the two albums came out four years apart. No, no, yeah, they came totally. out. Wait, oh, uh, Channel Orange and this one came yeah. out four years ago. Yeah, yeah. because because it's interesting because I definitely picked up on all the nostalgia stuff, even just on one listen, and hearing you all talk about it. Well, not you, Michael, but everyone else talk about it as this great <laughs> emotional moment where I <laughs> okay, whatever. What do you got? What do you got, buddy? Yeah, you got me. You got me. Okay, uh, where, where you know this like so. I, I'm starting to understand why so many people must love it. I'm really trying to come up Stanley over here. I, just, I so love this is a matchup I wanted, yeah, yeah. I needed, and it is delivering. I feel like we should have a poll on this on this episode, like who won the fight, Michael or Sly. <laughs> yeah. well, I'm voting for Michael. Says, so all right, all right. All right. Uh, no one vote for me. Um, <laughs> Yeah, but but like Humble King. The, yeah. The, the, I, yeah, I know another guy who should say something like that too. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what? Uh, yeah, speaking of stumbling through, uh, <laughs> um, <laughs> so like the the idea that it must like I, what I love is that if you're your age and not my age, and you went through these things, and then four years passed, and then he comes out with an album that's so much about what just happened in your life, it must have hit really hard, and so, like especially that one line, uh, "Summer is not as long as it used to be." Mm -hmm. I remember feeling that. I mean, it was a long time ago that I felt that, but like, that's a really well said sentence that does that thing that great music does where you're like, 
damn it, I remember thinking summer is not as long as it used to be. And then I, the whole project almost went too far for me, but there's that one line, everything sucked back then, which was like, okay, like you officially, like he can be as sanguine as he wants. He can be talking about the way things used to be and all that. But as long as he says the truth, which is that everything always sucks always and everything's great always, you know? So yeah, I, it, this, this is sort of like an experiment for me, listening to to you all who love it so much, understand why. And and, it, it, except for Michael, making <laughs> making sure how it. No, all... actually, I love it. Oh, <laughs> oh my! <laughs> we did it. Yes. A twist. <laughs> But so, yeah, so I, I, I really appreciate uh, seeing that, the how it connects with people so closely, because for me, it's abstract, but for you, it's very, very clearly emotional and raw. You know, yeah, what's yeah. also cool about what Frank did with this is the, the time, right? The four years, a lot of celebrities or artists will spend those four years between albums and kind of um, showcasing what they're doing with their time time right like displaying it through articles social media paparazzi posts and whatever but with frank it's like like he went away and so as as fans are waiting for this they were already feeling nostalgic about his music even though it was like one album and a mixtape that we had but it was like oh man like i wonder when the next frank's gonna come out and oh my gosh like channel orange was so good you know like so nostalgia was already part of our conversation with frank and he drops an album that was very nostalgic right it's like almost as if he had this time and he mentioned that he had writer's block block and his friend from back home inspired him to write more about his childhood because he's like oh man like i should talk more about who i am as a person and why i'm the way i am so he almost kind of dueled or mirrored what the fans were experiencing waiting for an album on this album and then at the end he like he thanks the fans in in the in the actual album for not only the patience but also for the creation of the character of frank ocean you know, and it's a character that most people would say, oh, great, I'm going to come back like Batman and like have like 20 versions of me. But he like hasn't come back. You know, so you're thinking, OK, well, so now what, Frank, you know, like I think we're we're kind of and this could be like the last thought or whatever. But we're we're going to be left after this album with maybe the prospect of no longer having Frank projects to work with and to be nostalgic over and to dream about. And it's and then it really amplifies the tension of blonde as a fan. You know, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, Michael and uh, Sky, what do you, what do you, what are some, what do you, what did you take away from like theme wise? There's a lot of in his work, a lot of like talking about queerness in this kind of broad sense, or at least like grappling with your different differentness if that makes any sense and that's a lot of what i hear and pick up especially on my like every time i hit this album that's kind of what i'm faced with and uh i think yeah that's the number one theme that pops out to me mm. yeah he's like very he so he came out in 2012 with this beautiful letter this beautiful mm -hmm. open letter that i shared and even michael likes it and uh, i <laughs> like, do like that letter yeah 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 it's it's beautiful it's beautiful like yeah. um and it, like that really like informed my artistry like that is a formative moment of like he says um you know, I want to make worlds rosier than mine. Like that's like very much my ethos and like creation of art of like when I make people laugh, like their pain evaporates for a second. Um, but like, so he came out, but then he like refuses when someone asked him like, Hey, are you bisexual? Are you a bisexual man? Like when people like said that to him, he was like, do not do that to me. Don't do that. Like, I really dislike, you can move on to the next question. I don't want to be labeled in that way. So like, it's like this, it's the duality of like, he is and he isn't. And, and like the title is spelled with the masculine and the feminine version of the word. And um, he talks about like being with women in this album. He does talk about being with men. Like this is a queer album. It also kind of isn't like it doesn't really. There's like a one real mention of like explicitly. This is about a man song. Um, but like there's but a that's, universal. That's yeah. uh... To me, that's like a faux pas that I think I fell into when I was younger, especially especially earlier on in my coming out journey, where mm -hmm. I would like blame things for not being explicitly gay enough or whatever, like especially giving it like 
you he doesn't have to be the permanent voice of gay people worldwide you know gay people llc right so he can talk on his experience and my experience is never that i want to be broad and vague about what i'm talking about my experience is that i'm just gonna tell you about my stuff which Mm -hmm. i just can't relate to that so i think that was a lot of my early distaste with like frank's work was i was like you came out and then you kind of did kind of were like that's it you know what mm-hmm. i mean mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Hmm. yeah yeah i i mean so i barely even knew that he'd come out like i'd maybe overheard that but i didn't really i mean you know andrew ambrose sent me a bunch of messages and and all that so i understood <laughs> so definitely when i hear it i don't hear it that way like i don't i didn't hear it as an album with a lot of queer themes i mean there's some line about like you'll have a wet dream about me because I'm your boyfriend or something like that. I don't know what the exact line is. So yeah, I mean, yeah. there, there, there are little hints there, but definitely that wasn't something that, so, and, and so I think I, I fell into that same trap where like, cause you know, my introduction to Tyler, the creator was pretty late as well. And you sort of listen, you're like, okay, eventually there's going to be some reference to banging dudes. Nope. Nope. No, that's <laughs> a lot of women. There's a lot of women being banged in this album, but no men. So like, and, and I think that's, you know, a, a limit, you know, some kind of weird, uh, lack of imagination, homophobia, you know, desire to put people into boxes, you know, like, like you're saying, you know, like tell us the answer. But then also, I don't know, like, cause we were talking about Panic at the Disco previously. And then there was this whole thing where like, hit, like, so my, my daughter was really into Panic at the Disco and she was like 11 or 12. And like most of what people would talk about was which members were sleeping with each other. And it was this whole kind of like thing that was built up. And I always felt like, is this real? Is this like an act or something? So, so I, I don't know. I, I, I try not to like, I try to just let the text speak and not kind of read into it. And it's I, so hard to let that happen, though, I especially <laughs> especially when so many people I knew were um, like pushing their thought onto these mm-hmm. albums, like especially like Childish Gambino or whatever. They were like, he's a cool Christian. I could be a cool Christian. Yeah. Like that was a <laughs> lot of how I saw people consuming music. And it made me absolutely sick to my stomach, you know, and it's just not – and I think I saw a lot. I wanted to do that to an artist. I wanted to have somebody to do that to. And it wasn't a one-to-one of my experience. You know, like most art won't be a one-to-one of your experience, except for maybe to that artist at that point in time. So. Yeah. So, yeah, I mean, as as far as like general themes, you know, like I, I, I find it to be like really super modern in the way that it's sort of bloggy, sort of like talky you know i was surprised at how i I, i'm trying to find i have my notes in front of me so like i I wrote somewhere something along the lines of like it's simultaneously like overworked and underworked so it's like very clearly got a lot of great structure and ideas and intentionality but at the same time a lot of the lyrics feel like he sort of hit record on his on his you know uh phone and just kind of started talking for a stream while. Of and then the, yeah. yeah, stream of consciousness. Um, which I guess Stanley was talking about with the the, the two modes. Um, that's that's so. what his mom did for that was uh for that voicemail, by the way. Is yeah. that his mom? If you're college kids who go to college, they smoke weed. <laughs> Don't <laughs> smoke weed. Do not smoke Lazy, weed. Do not do drugs. And unconcerned. <laughs> yeah. I love unconcerned. I'm like, I aspire to be unconcerned. <laughs> yeah. It's As someone cool. who like just recently, I've got the whole pot community really pissed at me because I, I went on this little rant about how 420 was Hitler's birthday and I did just pick a different day. And the, <laughs> the, the pot community is really mad at me. Like there's a lot. Like, look at the comment section. It's crazy. It's like. But they keep forgetting that they're mad at you and they're like, they get mad at you every single day. Like, what was it again? You would think that they would be unconcerned. Exactly. (laughs) Lazy, sluggish, uh, (laughs) stupid and unconcerned. So so the weird thing about me was I was actually raised by potheads. So I have like a visceral hatred of pot just because it sucks having potheads as parents. Mm. Um, I mean, it wasn't the pot that made them suck, but you don't know that when you're younger. Um, So like, you know, I'm not into it. And so as a parent, everything she said I'm so thankful because the way that she said it, like you can tell that she knows it's not working. You can tell that she's trying to say it in the coolest possible way. Like she's not just like drugs are bad. Okay. Like the way that she phrases yeah, she has it. Specifics. it yeah, it's specific. And I mean, obviously she goes too far, you know, saying yes. never, ever tell someone who might have a problem with marijuana that it could be addictive. Cause then that's their get out of jail free card. Cause like, Nope, it's not addictive. I don't have a problem. Um, but like it's, it, yeah, I, I, that's get, that, that skit just really 
blew me away. Just the because what I hear in it is his conflict that he's bringing out the conflict. It's not to make fun of her, nor is it to just listen. No, to I don't think so. I think that's a thing a lot of parents say, and it's discussed yeah. a lot. Yeah. And Sky earlier was that an instance of uh, a son a uh, pot calling the parents bad? <laughs> yes, <laughs> I think it was. Oh but yeah. But also, well, my dad, my dad I was think a minister, I said that so perfectly <laughs> without stumbling over myself just then. <laughs> Hold it, Andrew. <laughs> like, <laughs> next, he's going to have a well-written joke. <laughs> like, <laughs> oh, uh, yeah. Let me do some writing really quick. <laughs> Got another honest brat on the way. <laughs> <laughs> oh, this is good. This yeah. is good. <laughs> uh, um, yeah, but it's also like, um, that moment is like really spe- like, I love the interludes. Like that moment is like, I think her, the mom character, like expressing real love, but then like putting there, there's good advice in there. Like be yourself. Hey, maybe don't go in the car with someone who's inebriated. That's good advice. That's loving advice coming from someone who loves Frank, but also she's like, um, people who do weed are lazy, stupid, unconcerned. And he's, she's like labeling him at the same time, which makes him like want to be resistant to receiving love. And I think that's like the whole conflict of this album is like one of the, one of the conflicts of this album. It reminds me a little bit. Did you guys watch uh, Jared Carmichael's show on? Uh, oh, not I, yet. I did. I did. Yes. I watch okay. it. It's fantastic. Uh, I like it, but like, yeah, people hate it. <laughs> like, no, uh, people do hate it. I, I understand why people hate it, but I also, it reminds me of the way kind of his mom's presence is all over that, where it's like, you made me into the person I am, and now you are against the person that I am. And it's like, there's this weird dichotomy. And I think mm. that's like part of what he's tackling there, too. But I want your approval. But I want but, your approval. Yeah, so but I want to like humil- humil- humiliate you. I want to like all that stuff. And um, it's affecting the way I operate in my other relationships. Um, yeah. So, yeah. Um, and it look, yeah. Oh, go ahead, Sky. Go ahead. <laughs> oh, just, just, I, I wish I knew this existed because I used to teach a one credit class at my college, which is like academic planning seminar where you have freshmen come in. And I always give the first lesson. I say, you know, drugs aren't bad. Like That's what I say. Like they're not bad, but they can be not useful. Actually, going back, my, my only my favorite line in the Bible, all things are lawful, not all things are expedient. I basically try to tell them that, you know, I don't mean to send you back to college, but like, <laughs> you know, like the way that she says it all, that be yourself thing, because he's so kind to her to have that be the thing because if he called it lazy stupid and unconcerned that would be that bitterness but like be yourself like that really is the feeling that i have that like for for my kids like i don't want you to be a stoner because stoners are boring like i want you to be interesting i want like i love who you are and be yourself more and like that's how like that's how you feel so just the 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 love and conflict in there that was like I have a lot of mixed feelings about skits and albums, but that's upon the first listen, that's in like the top 1% of all skits, you know, like, you know, it's just right above torture by Wu-Tang Clan. I think it just made it really right up there. My uh, favorite skits me- are in the big day by a chance. Right? <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I laugh and laugh and I go, oh, marriage is good. Ah, uh, they'll be in love forever. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I, like I'll, I'll want to do like one more theme here. Um, we my favorite like, skit. Can I say my favorite skit? Yeah, from yeah, an yeah, album? yeah. This is real. Is okay. uh, Kanye's workout plan uh, from that Kanye album? I think <laughs> that one. That one made me really laugh when I heard it. Three ninety. Uh, yeah. Michael, it's, Michael, no Kanye talk, please. Yeah, you're right. I'm sorry. Oh, you. Yes, this is your first yeah, warning. Your like first warning. I'm, I'm doing exposure therapy. It's like you <laughs> eat one peanut or whatever. <laughs> um. So yeah, like the other, like speaking of duality of like all these themes of duality we're talking about. I think it's also about how being an artist is simultaneously about being a god of your own little world, while also affirming and expressing your humanity in a world where you are not God, that you don't have any control. I I think a lot of being an artist is like wanting control in a world where you can't, don't have control or you feel so small, like, you know, the, I think 
I wanted to make a Frank Ocean episode with Professor Sky, and it is so. Like, that's the being a god. That's being an artist. Um, but also, like, um, and, like, being an artist is about expressing your vision for the world. You have dedicated followers. And then it's also, like, um, but Frank is, like, up against the limitations of the fact of, the march of time he can't control time moving forward he can't go back in time to when things were good to him uh he can't make the people he loves love him back um so he gets high he he does he does two things he does three things actually he gets high on um drugs sex nostalgia and gratitude and then he makes himself big and he makes himself small. Like he's simultaneously saying, I'm the greatest artist in the world. All of you are peasants next to my talents. And I'll, also, I'm the most loving person in the world. My love is transformative, will move mountains, transcend generations. But also, please spend one night with me. Please, please. I, I am so pathetic without you. I am nothing without you. And it's that like... Uh, so like that's another instance of duality in this album. Uh, yeah, uh, and, yeah, I'd, and uh, uh, yeah. So I, des <laughs> yeah, I describe yeah. what, what you describe as freedom, and I think Frank is talking about that a lot, right? It's the the illusion and the realization of freedom, right? So like art gives you that realization where you can express yourself however you want to, but the illusion of that art is that if no one consumes it, then are you really free and are you really expressive? But then it's like, well, if you believe in yourself enough and you are able to create your own world, then you don't need other people to be free. And yet Frank was signed to a contract that restricted him, and so he needed to get out of that to be free. And the big freedom is we try to make sure that we maximize every day of our lives and yet we're all going to die. So then that that freedom of being able to live life to the fullest is also an illusion because death is promise. Mm -hmm. You know, so so I think that grappling of freedom is another way of looking at that. Right. It's like usually we think of freedom as like you do this thing, you get out of jail. But Frank is both out of jail and in a jail that he did and didn't create, mm -hmm. you know, and he's yeah. really good. And this is where. I will compare one just a one time to yay in that what Frank did was he understood that the micro of his freedom was cap was possible. And then once he got it, he got out. Whereas a character like yay is like, wow, it's possible to be free. Let me try to get everyone free, but not be capable of actually relating, uh, adapting and absorbing everyone. And so then he drowns into this pursuit of freedom that is ultimately, you know, unattainable. Frank is out and now Frank is out for real. And I think that's why it's like the idea of him coming back with another record, I think is very minuscule because he's done it. Like he's actually, he gained the system. He got out what he wanted. He has an album that is forever, you no know, loved and adored. Like, why would he come back? Like there's, there's no reason for him to do so. Coming back is him losing his freedom. Yeah. Don't, don't let them find Tupac. Right. Like exactly. I, I, exactly. I, I, I didn't, I, I had that underlined, like, have them explain it to me and y'all just explain it to me. <laughs> so, wow. you know, that's, that, I mean, cause now he gets to be Tupac. He gets to be just gone and, and, you know, not there. Uh, I did want to do one more yay question. So is it confirmed? Has he ever talked about seeing Kanye perform Runaway and then basing a lot of this album on the little, cause I feel like, you know, the part of Runaway where he just talks for like 10 minutes and he has the beat going to me, that whole last song, the, the, Future free, what's it called? Future free, mm -hmm. something like that. Yeah, it's yeah. kind of like runaway a little bit. It yeah. just like it like the bit. themes of it, and just like it feels like it's just kind of talking. It's just like this kind of great beat. So I don't know. That's that's what I heard, but I I have to turn everything into a, a Kanye reference because that's yeah. all I listened, well, that's well, all I listened kinda, to in 2016. Well, he kind of says in in that song, he kind of says like, "Hey, the song is done now, mm -hmm. and the album is done. It's the last so uh, song of the album, and now I'm just gonna like talk shit and say whatever I want to say." So in that way, it's like that stream of consciousness idea, I think, is very related to to what Ye did earlier on. But but Frank is certainly, um, I don't know, like a more refined version of what Ye was trying to do, I think. Yeah, well, I, th I think you're right that he he doesn't have a lot of the 
flaws that that Ye has in his personality that allows him to actually just disappear, which mm -hmm. would probably be best for <laughs> yeah, most yeah. most famous people would be much better off if they if just they disappear. Were less <laughs> online, yes, I yeah. think that a lot. <laughs> mm -hmm. Can mm -hmm. I say a joke that I want edited out of the podcast, guaranteed, no matter what? <laughs> Fine. <laughs> yeah. Uh, what's what? What do uh, Sky and Kanye West have in common? What? What? That they both want people to know what Hitler's birthday is. <laughs> <laughs> okay. That's, now, were you going to cut me out? <laughs> if, you, if you cut out that joke, I will never be on the show again. <laughs> oh, it's staying in. It's staying in, Michael. <laughs> Uh, it just felt it. too mean out of nowhere. No, it it's like, great. <laughs> oh, my God, it's great. We did it, Joe. Uh, yeah. We did it. Yeah. Do come. <laughs> Barbara, you've been silent for a little bit. What do you got? <laughs> no, that was all good. I really appreciate everything that just happened. <laughs> um, well, let's uh, get into highlight songs and low light songs rather than this break. Click. Uh, and we're back here to talk about uh, Frank Ocean's Blonde. Uh, let's start with some highlight songs. Uh, Sky, what is a highlight song that you really enjoyed from this album? Well, given the fact I've only listened to it a couple times, you know, I think I, I think solo, um, mm. because I, you know, I, I really doing kind of faux gospel stuff is so dangerous because if you do it wrong, it just comes across totally wrong. Um, but there's a, there's a hell in heaven is like such a great way of describing the way I thought about my life when I was 23 years old old like the just it's yeah so I, I i really enjoyed that um it it's kind of it was hard i knew you were going to ask about highlights it's kind of a hard album to pick out highlights because it's so i mean i mean i just it's so vibey right like the it has an atmosphere all the way through it's not like there's kind of one song with like the hook that catches you um or that really jumps out so and, and I, I say that as a compliment to it but yeah so i, I would say a solo the first one not the not not the other one with uh, under 3K, which is cool too, but weird and out of place. Maybe not cool. Whoa. <laughs> <laughs> well, it, I mean, I don't know. Does it fit in the album? I mean, it's very cool. And I'm happy that it exists. I, but I kind of view the solo reprise as like another talking head. You know how he like kind of interviews mm -hmm. characters. Like it's just like he's interviewing Andre 3000 about his life and his legacy and stuff like that. It's like one of those in this album. I kind of view it. What that did way. you do to Andre 2000, et cetera, et cetera? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> he's so... Uh, Andre 3000 and late late. Yeah. That's, yeah. that's, yeah. that's, funny. that's yeah. good. There's something there. Yeah. There's something there. Like, yeah. Get back to me in two weeks. It'll be. Yeah. yeah exactly. Yeah. Like, Andrew's <laughs> like, I need to write for eight minutes. Give me yeah. a second. <laughs> uh, <laughs> um, sorry. Sorry. Uh, can I do a highlight? So that way yeah, it's not yeah, taken yeah, by yeah. the people that uh, I think uh, pink and white is very, very Whoa. good. That's that is a very, very famous song from this album, but I think it's famous rightly. So I think the um, tune of like, it's catchy. It's great to put on it. Like it's a great car song. Like let's have a good time in the car in the summer. Perfect for that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I, that's like one, it's very early in the album and it's a moment of gratitude. Like, I think that's a beautiful part of this song is like, he kind of gets at the lesson early. He kind of gets like, I should be grateful for the experience that I had. And then it like the rest of the album, he's like, it, that good feeling evaporates. And he's like having a hard time the rest of the album. And then the end of the album, he's like, I should be grateful for the experiences that I had. It's like, I, I and it's also beautiful. Like, it, I think the song takes place in the wake of hurricane Katrina. So like the, 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 the storytelling and like the the picture like the milk crates like you're diving off the milk crates and like of a flooded area so it's like finding joy finding love in this wreckage um of the world like that you didn't create basically so i think it's beautiful yeah i think to the point to the sky and michael's points about, what about um, my like point uh, well, I mean, I'm just trying to extend your point because yours is so good. Okay. Um, not that the other ones weren't good. Uh, Sky mentioned the idea of like some some of these songs just blending in together. And then Michael, you're like, like this is a song that like 
uh, almost kind of fits in a traditional structure of having like a catchy tune, a good hook. And I think it's the one song that doesn't need the rest of the album to make sense. I think yeah. most of the other songs, like without the album, if you just listen to one of those tracks, like solo, uh, solo, you're kind of like, what's happening? Whereas Pink and White, like it's just, it just is a good song and it's good in the album. It's good out of the album. It's just really good. You know, I pray pretty sweet and I got my ox privileges revoked. Yeah, rightfully so. Yeah. <laughs> uh, my highlight is self control. Mm. I I love 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 this song. I think that um, it's it just fits the 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 aesthetic of what I think Frank's the best Frank experience would be, which is to see him at a festival of some sort. Um, and just having everyone sing that last part, like the, ah, 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 then you gotta leave, leave, leave. Like, it just like, it just feels so good. It gives me chills. It gives me the feeling of what summer sounds like, feels like, looks like. And it's a moment of levity in this, in this album where it's like, I know it's, it still deals with some of the kind of the duality and the conflict, but I can take the emotion of it and just feel really good listening to it. Um, so I, and I think that the theme of self-control on this record is great because it's like, here's a song where he is trying to control himself. Yeah, I know it's, it's boring, but no, I'm but sorry. <laughs> I need to, I need to, I am just listening and then I forget that I need to. No, no but that's no, good. But that's exactly what it is. It's such a, com- it's a comfortable feeling. And usually when we think about self-control, it feels restrictive, but this doesn't feel restricted. It feels like, like you're at home and you're feeling connected to whatever space you're in and you're so your guards are so down that you can yawn at the most exciting moment of a podcast you know so so for that reason i think it's most great. exciting part <laughs> <laughs> when will it be exciting <laughs> that's me listening to any podcast i hope this gets exciting soon <laughs> I, I i like agree with that feeling of uh, self-control is like first of all just a perfect it's perfect. It's a perfect song. It's yeah. perfect. It's like the bet, like it, it reaches the heights of what music could do in my limited life. You know, like maybe they're, I'm sure they're, I'm sure Cocksucker Blues is really good. Like, I'm sure that's a great song. Yeah, it's, um, but, you know, like, <laughs> it's also like when you're a kid and you have like ple- awesome memories, awesome experiences, you're not thinking about like holding on to them. Like, like when you're a kid, you don't think I got to cherish this memory of me hanging out with my mom at the park. You know, you're just experiencing it. And then when you get older, um, you start to realize like, oh, these, you know, I might lose this person I love. Like maybe this relationship will one day slip away. This person I love might pass away, whatever. And you kind of like hold on to it. You kind of like try to cherish it and be present and like enjoy it while it's happening. But that makes you enjoy it less, you know? So this song is like this beautiful transcendent feeling. And then Frank is saying, I know you got to leave. Take, stay one more night with me, please. But that Mm. even, even if that one person agrees to stay that one night more, that night will pass and he'll be alone and summer will end, which is why I want to re-listen to that song over and over again. No. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I think it's such a good couplet with, um, uh, skyline too. I think those two songs go really nicely together with that kind of, you know, the summer, the kind of nostalgic, lazy summer vibe, you know? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. He's like, he can't control, the day, the nights turning into days. He can't like the end of like Skyline Two. He's like, here comes the morning. Ah, like mention that thing, but also like, um, <laughs> but like it's kind of like, oh fuck, like this magical night is gonna be over, <laughs> you know? He's and he's like mourning and he's like screaming at it and like in Ivy he like throws a tantrum at the end of the song, and um, yeah, uh, Harper, what's a highlight for you? Um, I'm going to say Godspeed. I Mm -hmm. love that song so much. And I, I feel like it's possible that I've listened to the James Blake version more than the original, but I love them both. It's just, it's a really perfect song. It gets me every time. It's like, it's another like gospel inspired song. Clearly it's got the organ. It's got, uh, you know, the gospel vocals in the background. Um, but it's just like, it, it like, 
it feels devastating but it's it's lyrically i don't actually think it's like that devastating of a song it just like has that you know guttural feeling to it but um it's it's like a breakup song but it's like a gentle it's 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 a gentle message of a breakup song hmm. um it's but like that uh, troll song, like get like, back up again, <laughs> sending yes. sending your employers off into the wilderness. Yeah, I wish that Quibi would play that for me as I left. <laughs> <laughs> that would be so crazy. <laughs> Wishing you God's beat. Glory. I'll always love you. Me when I get a job review. <laughs> Uh, sorry, I interrupted. <laughs> no, no, no. Um, yeah, but anyway, I just love it. I think it's a perfect song. I, you know, I, there are maybe, um, you know, more iconic songs on the album, but it's the one that I like to listen to and feel a lot of feelings to. Mm -hmm. I uh, love White Ferrari. That's my number one song. Like, th I think mm -hmm. my favorite was always Self Control when I was in college, um, but. This time around, White Ferrari really flummoxed me, um, especially like the third verse about like, um, I'm sure we're taller in another dimension. You say we're small and not worth the mention of he he's like trying to comfort himself by saying like, maybe in another dimension we're together. And then. This other person saying like, no, not even there. <laughs> not even there, right. bro. <laughs> like, no, we're less together there than we are here. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Also, like, um, tr trees are upside down. I don't know, in that dimension, too. Like, But, like... Um, Millie Bobby I, Brown and Kendrick Lamar are friends there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's the only difference in that universe. <laughs> like... We're all like, Drake's right. <laughs> You're like, oh, this guy's cultural. Um, <laughs> I um, I think in this album, he has this like semi-altruistic, like, I will love you no matter what. And I'll sacrifice my own happiness to give you that love. I, it doesn't matter if I'm homeless and cold and hungry. I will sacrifice myself that so that you could smile a little bit. And I think part of it is altruistic and like genuine love. But part of it is just I think he doesn't believe that he could ever experience that same love ever again. And which is why he's like trying to like go to the past and recreate it, like get the ingredients together to like recreate it. And White Ferrari is the moment where he just realizes it can't happen, you know. Not gonna, mm -hmm. not gonna happen, bro. <laughs> so, yeah, yeah. I also feel like on this, you know, like there's so much there lyrically, but also just musically, this album I find to be very impressive. And there are, I think, from every single song, there's something that musically that will stick out in my mind that I'll always think about from this album. And from White Ferrari, that definitely has one of those moments where the um where he does the in this life the life, you know that kind of modulation on that it's so good i just uh, it it really sticks and it's I, I don't know how someone thinks of it it's one of those things where i don't know how someone thought of it and it's so good oh so white ferrari was sort of a low light for me not because i didn't like it but because I learned about that song in my interview with Black Country New Road, and they told me that Snow Globes was based on White Ferrari. So I was kind of like, it was sort of like the 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 you know trying to find the gayness in the album. I was like, <laughs> like I don't know White Ferrari well enough that I know when I actually know the song like in my bones that I'll totally understand the similarity. But as it was, I was like, it's sort of like if you ever watched uh, Hidden Fortress by Kurosawa, like that was the the basis of Star Wars. But if you like watch it at 15 years old, you're like, this is not Star Wars, you know? Like, yeah, you, yeah. <laughs> you have to be like a certain age to understand what the similarity is. So that that was kind of a, a wild thing. And then also I just cannot think of- <laughs> I'm not know, seeing a brother and sister in love right now. <laughs> <laughs> But then also, I just I can't get you know, glass house live for New Year's Eve sloppy steaks at Trafonis and and white <laughs> Ferrari like to me it's like white Ferrari I only associate with that sketch so like that was also in my head that's who I saw through the whole song so anyways mm. that's neither here nor there mm. wait is I, that song in the sloppy steaks sketch 
No, but he says he says, um, oh, I used to be a piece of shit. Glass house, white Ferrari, lift from New Year's Eve. <laughs> <laughs> That's actually in in the sketch. He drives, I think, a Mustang. But what he says is uh, is, <laughs> is white Ferrari. <laughs> That's yeah. really funny. Yeah. Oh, what a funny okay. show. Yes. Yeah, Frank let's Ocean's talk about that. Yeah. <laughs> By the way, like <laughs> uh, his brother now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> underrated video. Check out Sky's like ranking of all the uh I think you should leave sketches. Like that's so good. Like just like your they do you have the most recent season on there? Sky? He has like a few like uh little videos in there. Like oh, okay. Yeah, yeah so that's on my on my second channel. Where, where does I, where does 55 burgers, 55 fries, 55 <laughs> Where does that one land? <laughs> no, I don't I don't think I did the third season yet. Okay. It's like you need, in my opinion, you need like it, it has to be a part of your brain. It's kind of like the thing with the song, White Ferrari. Like, yeah, there's certain art, oh, yeah, you, you know, you will have to live with it and you'll have to be like water <laughs> off a duck's back before you can really appreciate it. So, not like, to me, 55 Burgers is uh, <laughs> cemented there. in the Pantheon. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, um, my problem is my wife hates yelling, and <laughs> any sketch oh. that has too much yelling, it's hard for me to like watch as much as i want because wait does he have yelling at his sketches <laughs> yes <laughs> some uh, sketches he doesn't yeah. yell <laughs> like, like um but like uh to harper's point about the song just like how did you come up with that uh there's he did one interview that's not in the magazine where with the new york times with john carson melly willie whatever, whatever his name is but like um that guy like the new york times guy and um he said when I was making the record, there was 50 versions of White Ferrari. I have a 15-year-old little brother, and he heard one of the versions, and he said, you got to put that one out. That's the one. And I was like, nah, that's not the version, because it didn't give me peace yet. And I think that's the difference between Frank and everyone else. Like, everyone else. Like, he only puts out the, out, the version of the song that gives him peace. And <laughs> that's the reason why like I don't listen like I don't remember any of the songs from Drake's dark demo tapes or whatever I don't remember any of the songs because it's just content and he just like shit it out and you know I forgot it and it doesn't matter and this song he like just like he he didn't put it out until it was ready and like that's why we're still listening to it and that's why I imagine it's some he's our version of like Lauren Hill, like where if he does a hundred more Coachella disasters, people will still love him. People will, he will still be a legend to our generation and hopefully beyond. You don't remember Tusi slide? <laughs> no. Oh yeah, I do remember yeah, that. Come on. Now. Oh, yeah. Yeah. All right. <laughs> all right. A plus. Uh, <laughs> Tusi slide. I don't know what Tusi slide is. Yeah. All right. Uh, 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 yeah, I, I, so, just an idea. I you do it right now. now. I think it will really hit <laughs> like 2024. All right. Any other highlights from this album? That we yes, about? absolutely. Um, oh. uh, ah, um, OK, so I just I going back to just the whole build up to actually getting to hear this album. Right. Like, you know, Channel Orange was 2012 and then we wait so long and then I couldn't even watch Endless on Apple because Apple was being evil. And then all of a sudden the next day we had Blonde. Right. And then frantically, you know, you're running to Spotify to listen to Blonde. Right. Mm -hmm. And then you hit play and the beginning of Nike's, the beginning of the whole album starts and just that sound at the beginning and then these bitches want Nikes. It's so good. It, immediately, I knew that I was like in for a treat. You know, Frank Ocean had delivered what we've all been waiting for. I felt so good. I, I just think nothing can beat the beginning of this album and that feeling that I felt in August of 2016. I agree that Nikes is super strong. Yeah, yeah. it's a great opener. It's this is like I like it as like the setting for the out like it, this is the world we find Frank in like it's very hedonistic, materialistic and miserable. And like he's like just searching for any meaning, like any crumbs of affection, really. Um, yeah. And also just like the evokes a political message of like the capitalist capitalism of like the, the shallowness of brands and then like the death of like 
ASAP and then uh, uh, Pimp C and uh, Trayvon. Like, just like, this is the world we live in in this world. Like, let's not forget. I know this is like a beautiful, surreal, dreamlike experience listening to this album. But let's not forget the real world for a second. It's it's really good. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And, and, and he's going yeah, commando, go right? Is that part of the thing? Because he says mean? A, a ball stuck to my gene. Is he talking about <laughs> yeah, like... Yeah. So At like, the end, he's, yeah. I found that interesting because I found that this weird, visceral, like tactile, unpleasant feeling, and then the whole summerness of the whole thing, and just I don't know that that like that kind of weird, vulgar detail really jumped out at me. Like, and he, I think he even says ball made, so he's wearing like thousand dollar jeans or whatever it is, and then yeah. Anyways, more like ball made. <laughs> this is the pun he made. On the, I don't get on the it. Album. Oh, I, oh, <laughs> like, ball. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like. Um, it's like, but like, I think this is the world he lives in that he cl- like miserable, like loveless. And then he closes his eyes and imagines Ivy. Like life was simple. Yeah. I was in love and I'm not here and I'm so upset. You know, that's, that's the world we are. And then at the end of future free, when he's like, kind of like figured it out, it cycles back to Nike. He's like, whoops, I'm back here again. Mm hmm. I'm talking a lot. I'm 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 pulling a real Professor Sky here. <laughs> like, oh, this is good. No, that's it. That you, you tied the loop, right? Like in a podcast, yeah. when we should all be silent. <laughs> <laughs> no, um, you ties you tied the loop. I think on the in the interview he talks about loops and how he wanted to create like two loops in this on this record on this album. And and you're right. Like at the end of Future uh, Future Free, it's like you can go back to Nikes. And I saw somewhere where he performed this the song future free and then he actually went back to nike's at the end of his performance as kind of like a cue of like yes like 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 listen to this again you know and people were going nuts you know and i i think future free is is one of my highlights just because of that passage where he talks about um i should i should be paying them i should be paying y'all honest to god i'm just a guy i'm not a god Oh, I and love it, that lyric. Right. And it was so cool because it's like he is like looking back. And then that's the moment where he looks at us and kind of says, like, you know, I should pay, be paying you, the listener, the fan for being patient, for being supportive, for allowing me to like navigate the bullshit that's the music industry and deliver you a piece of me that you may or may not be able to relate to, but hopefully you can feel. And and for him to kind of acknowledge that he's not a god, but you sometimes you make him feel that way that we make him feel that way is I think it was really cool. And then, and then the duality again comes back. Cause then at the end of that, he kind of starts studying and says like, you know, if I was a God that don't let me run this thing. Cause I would change the galaxy and whatever. But in that moment of sincerity, I think it was really beautiful. Any low lights of this album? <laughs> Uh, can I say like a general I this keeps being my low light on a lot of mm. these yeah. is because of its sameness. This is the main reason I, I come into this album sabi. or this the vibiness of it. OK, all, OK, can yeah. I say is yeah. it just starts to like I get kind of like hit lulled by it a little bit where I like can't even listen to it. Like, I don't feel like I'm engaging with it. I'm just kind of like it's hitting my ears and it's like bouncing off like Nike's hits really well through pink and white. And then when be yourself starts, I kind of like start to get lost in it a little bit where I'm just like, it's just hitting my ears and I kind of can't even like differentiate between tracks, mm-hmm. which is a positive, I think for what people like from this album. But for me, it is like very hard to hold my attention. It's hard to like critically listen to this. Well, mm-hmm. once once again, we're totally on the same page here because wow. as like as as a music reviewer, albums like this are so hard because it's like I want to talk about every song, but then I'll look down at my notes and I'll be like, oh sh- wait, I'm three songs later. Yeah, it's not because I don't like it. it. It's just because like you're sort of into it and like you're in this whole world and it's like you're yeah, which it's a benefit and and a drawback. Uh, yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. Uh, yeah. Like Fran Hoffner was on our show and she was talking about classical music and like she said, sometimes it's good that your attention wanes. Sometimes you're it's like it's doing its job that it like your attention. I It is different, like being on a review show and then also, Michael, your predilection for pop music and like what's the that's like, tough. Yeah, is, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, yeah, I hate, I do hate, I like that I you like do pop hate. music. Yeah. No, I like that I like pop music, but I do find that it is like, 
I really do have a hard time where it's like, I feel like sometimes I just have trash days. You know what I mean? I have oh, no, 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 no. Like this, I have a bad baseline. So bear in mind anything I say, you know, where it's kind of like caveated. Low light, I have to say Facebook story. I've always, that has always bothered me. Like, I just don't think, I'm not anti-skit either. Like, I think sometimes a skit can work. But I do not think that this needed to be here at all. You know, that's that's just how I've always felt about it. And I listened to it again this week several times. And I thought, I still don't need this. I do. I, I, I do that song on karaoke. I, I like do that. I do cover that song. <laughs> <laughs> so I was uh, on Facebook. And, <laughs> yeah, and I, she was uh, like, do not add me on Facebook. <laughs> <laughs> you see, I, I, I agree. I agree with you because what I don't like about it is that's kind of like fake deep. And then the other thing yes, is that like, yeah, for sure. My favorite, my favorite line of all of Big Lebowski is you're not wrong, Walter. You're just an asshole. So it's like, you're not wrong. I get what you're saying, but like, just join on Facebook. If it makes her happy, just like do it. Like you don't have <laughs> yeah, to stand on principle. Yeah. Like if you want to be in a good relationship, Relationship, you cannot stand on principle for dumb shit that doesn't matter. Like that, that really needs God, to be. I gotta write this down. I need to. Yeah, yeah. Like, so he should have just said, "All right, fine," and then just you know. Like, anyways, so that that's what what bugged me. But yeah, and that's there's like a so funny. And there's like a timeless quality to this album where that dates it really yeah. a lot. You know, like I don't know. Um, my like. I think it's a good song. I kind of like get into it at, by the end, but like pretty sweet is like, yes, that's so like, I, I appreciate his experimental nature, but like, I don't know what the song is about. I don't really understand what it is. Um, it, it, it's just like, and I give up trying to understand it. Like, like y- y'all are talking about. Um, yeah. I think the yeah. thing I do like about pretty sweet though, is the, the, there's like a bridge in that. That's not actually, there are no words to it. He's just like, ah, and it's got, um, this like really driving beat in the back. And it really makes me feel like, I don't know, fast and furious, which is something I enjoy. So I did like Lovely. that part of that song. Yeah. <laughs> um, stray observations, any stray observations from this album? Uh, Sky, what do you, do you have any? Well, it's it's actually also going to be my plug. So what I was hoping Ooh. to happen is that I, I didn't know what was going to happen when I came on the show and this whole thing. And what I was hoping was I would get like my idea for how I'm going to frame my review. And so you saw me. I was looking on my phone to make sure it doesn't already exist. So you can tell me if it already exists. But yeah. as far as I can tell, this is the best illustration of Proustian concepts of what? time and, and love. So. Look forward to that. I, I wrote it down. I almost wrote fuck Proust because I, I love talking about Proust, but it's very, very tiring. But he writes a lot about like the bittersweet nature of memory and loss. And he even does this whole thing where he has this character called Albertine, um, he, who he treats like absolute garbage, but a fascinating character. And in reality, I can was, relate. Yeah. In reality, <laughs> it, was, it was written after a guy whose name was Albert. So it's even the kind of blonde, blonde thing. And, uh, and a lot of it's about like his son summers in the so anyways so i'm i'm uh really excited because i'm gonna have to learn a lot more about this album and i'm gonna have to refresh myself on proust and so uh, and i'm gonna have to have, record that before my wife goes into labor so i can release it then so i'm oh. i'm excited and and frustrated that i don't have more time but yeah mm-hmm. that's my that's my stray thought um so anyone out there uh, listening if you have more thoughts and you've also read proust and love this i think you'll you'll be like oh my god it's right there no. I, I I read a lot of Proust, but I want to like you know like talk more. Like I've been talking a lot this episode. Yeah. Me too. <laughs> but, <Yeah. laughs> I'm a Proust dead. I'm a yeah. Prooster. <laughs> Punky Prooster. <laughs> Punky, yeah, those those are the stand names. Um, <laughs> yeah, like uh, stray observations on this album. My just note is that um, I really love Ivy too. We didn't really get into that one, but I do love that song a lot. And I just think um, that line, I thought that I was dreaming when you said you loved me is like, just really hit me at the right time. You know, I was like, just so, so teen, I guess I might've been not a teen anymore, but just real, real teen romance vibes with that line. And that was the, the, um, the title of my Tumblr for many, many years was that line. Um, That's great. Yeah. That's great. Yeah, that is great. Like, that's like, I don't have any like embellishment on that. That's, that's just great. 
And that's why it's a stray, uh, stray thought. Yeah. <laughs> Mine was streets ahead for a long time for a uh, community reference. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Nice. Uh, the mother stray observation is just like close to you is great. Like the Burt Bacharach to the Stevie Wonder to Frank Ocean, like game of telephone that's happening there where it starts with like, this pure expression of life, like, why do birds suddenly appear to, like, Stevie just, like, fucking around with it with his vocoder? And then to Frank's cynical, like, despondent, like, why am I preaching to this choir, to this atheist? Is such a great transformation of that song. So, I love it. Yeah, I, that song, this was the first time I I realized that it was related to the to close to you the original song because i maybe just because it's gone through those layers of of change but um i'm a big fan of the carpenters so i just listening to it this time i couldn't mm. believe i that i'd never put that together before and, and uh, I'll, I'll yeah. drop a little bit of professor sky lore so yes. the carpenters version of the song is that's my wife and my song because like we just oh, love oh, each other so much that we're unafraid to have that be our song like when that's my ringtone for her and her ringtone for <gasps> me it's the same, is that song <laughs> so cute. and the really funny part is that um so we put it on our wedding playlist when we got married you know five years ago uh, five years and two days ago and uh oh. and so it was on random it was going through and my older brother uh, he just was sitting next to the, the iPod and the song comes on. And he's like, all right, I got you. Don't worry. And he hits skip because he's like, I got rid of that stupid fucking song. Don't worry. <laughs> so it was like our song at our wedding. And my brother, who's just like trying to be too cool, just like <laughs> skips the song. And it still makes me laugh. Like, I'm not even mad at my brother. It was just so it was wow. such a perfect moment. That's it's hilarious. Like, yeah. So I that was a nice surprise to hear because when I saw the song was called Close to You and then the previous song quotes here, there and everywhere. Right. So it's mm -hmm. like you have the Beatles quote and then you have this quote. So, yeah, I, that's a whole nother highlight. That's a whole nother thing where I'm like, yeah, I'm just I don't know how I'm going to even do a video about this stupid album. I just have to hope <laughs> that everyone else has already said everything except for the Proust bit. So I don't have to say the rest of it. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Hey, this is like Proust. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> 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 hey, uh, Harper, you said you're a fan of the Carpenters. Who do you like better, Sabrina or John? Oh, man, that's a tough one. Uh, or Joseph and Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> like, the most famous Carpenter of all. That's right. Yes. Got to go back to the OG Carpenter. <laughs> or bees. Oh. Who? Carpenter bees. Oh, Carpenter bees. <laughs> I liked it. I just I was just trying to come up with a worse joke. I thought... I like it. <laughs> That's the this is the space. This is the space <laughs> where like yeah. we're not talking about Proust in this review. Yeah. Like we're not we're not there yet. This we're is not about Sabrina Carpenter. <laughs> One of the carpenters. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Nepo baby, by the way. Her dad uh, made the thing. Um so yeah, let's go through final thoughts and ratings. Those are um those are a review of the some of the tracks. Um yeah, like who would like to go first on this? I can go ahead. Uh, yeah. I thought it's uh, it's a really great album. I mean, it's pretty clear that people like Frank and like Frank a lot. Uh, and I'm people. I, I do enjoy Frank a lot. I still think Channel Orange is is a better album for me. Like, I think it means more to me. But I could see why this album was ranked, I guess, in the top 10 of Apple's greatest albums of all time. So I'm kind of stuck between my personal rating and the world's rating. So I'll give this an 8.5 Facebook requests out of 10. Oh, it's going to be mine. <laughs> like yes! <laughs> Right. Um, I am, uh, liking the discussion about this album. I would, I like to know more about him. I think recontextualizing my mindset from kind of the negative space. I think I associate this with would help me like the album better, but all in all, it's a little bit of a slower album with a guy singing. So it's <laughs> tough for me already. That's already an uphill battle for me. So, uh, I'm going to go ahead and give this, uh, seven, uncaring uh, <laughs> uh lazy uncaring ratings out of 10 <laughs> lazy <laughs> like oh, it doesn't matter okay harper where, where are you at um well i loved it uh i like stanley i'm a people um <laughs> i yeah i i it holds up you know i loved it when it came out i loved frank before this album came out and i'll love him forever even if he never puts out an album and honestly i'm like i'm 
really okay if he never puts out an album just because of the work that he's released is so solid on its own. And I feel like I'd have to like reconsider everything if he ever put out more music, you know? I mean, I'd love that too, but I hope anyway. he's featured on Katy Perry's new album. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> That'll be did the place. Did that um, song together with, uh, uh, what's this, Calvin Harris? The slide. Amigos. Oh, oh, is that? that? <laughs> no, yeah, that's not Oh, Frank that's, that's not... A- no, Frank is not, but not with not with. It's Katie, Frank's on one though, right? Yeah, Frank's yeah, on one of those songs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a good song. It's great. Yeah, song. it's really it's a good. good. Song. Yeah. Anyway, <laughs> yes. And do my bank account. Yeah. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> I know. That was that fire. Uh, well done. Wow. Well done. <laughs> good job, team. Um. Anyway, I'm gonna give it nine point five out of ten. Mountains you won't move. Yeah. Oh. Hmm. Sorry, that, was, uh, that was really good. That was a great review, Harper. Well done. Yeah. Thank what you. about you, Prof? Well, Prof's let's game. see. So because I've only listened to it for a day, I, I think it's very promising. And I don't give ratings anyways. Attack so, of the clones. <laughs> yeah, well, yes. So what I'm going <laughs> to do is I'm going to give it however many musical Franks I can think of on the fly. Okay. okay got it. So Frank Zappa. Uh-huh. Uh, uh, Interesting. Sinatra, yep. Uh-huh. Uh, Frank Ocean, we'll count him. Yeah. Uh, Frank San Pedro from uh, from Crazy Horse. Yeah. Bum, Frankie bum. Uh, Frankie says Frankie goes to Hollywood. Mm-hmm. Isn't that what they're called? Yeah. Uh-huh. Um, Frankenstein by Johnny Winter or Edgar uh-huh. Winter. Edgar Winter. Hmm. So that's how many. That's how many I give it. <laughs> Can I throw in my really cursed ones really quick? Yeah. Uh, Frankenstein by Rena Sawayama. Frankie Grande. Frankie Jonas. There you go. Those are the ones I have. Okay, very good. <laughs> wow, like boosted that score. Nice. <laughs> yeah, you needed them. I talked about two instances where Frank's, when those two albums dropped, they really, um, they dropped at the perfect time. You know, like, you know, in high school, then in college. And then like talk, like it's been so many years, you know, I've had so many experiences like, uh, like with requited, unrequited love, all that such. And, you know, prepping for this album, prepping for this review, I put a lot of pressure on myself because it meant so much to me. I want to do it justice. I still feel like I didn't do, quite do it yet, do it quite enough justice. Like, you know, we, we, I didn't include enough like references to Proust. Um, <laughs> like that was that's what cool. Zach that's thought me. before he made the yeah, cut. Yeah, 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 I didn't yeah. do enough justice. <laughs> like, but like you did the goodest. Yeah, yeah, for sure. But I um yeah, it's like so what happened though was there's one more instance where this like do do this episode today, like we were recording it at this perfect time where I yeah, I, I went through like I we I had like a breakup with like my like this person I was seeing for like two and a half months on and off. And that uh, that happened like a few hours ago. So that happened a few hours ago, and we're talking about this today. So I am like really like, while that relationship like ended amicably and it's like really positive, I'm really grateful for it. I'm also like really bummed out and like there's a lot of mis mis potential and stuff like that. And it's very I'm very sad. And this album was here for me today. This album was here for me today. First of all, just the fact of I have something to do tonight rather than just like sit in my bed and be sad. I'm also like, but it's also like some hope of like, I hope that I could look at this moment I'm living right now in 2024 when I'm 50 or 60 or 70 or ho- however old Professor Sky is. Um, <laughs> like Every time. Yeah, like however old I am, like I can look back at this moment and one view this as like one of the happiest moments of my life. Like looking back, looking back at this time and like, wow, that was really magical and beautiful, but also being so happy that I'm so far away from it, you know, at that age in the future. And I think that's really beautiful. I I'm really glad this album was here for me and was there for me then. And that's what, music great music can do i'm and um i'm always be grateful so i'm gonna give it 10 uh instances where you practice self-control so 
Yeah. I clearly didn't. Yapping. <laughs> so <laughs> that's very interesting. I love to yap. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, that was our review of uh, channel Frank Ocean's uh, Blonde. Uh, this is fantastic. Uh, thank you, Sky, for like trying this album out. Like, what a privilege. Uh, what would you like to plug? What's out there for you? Uh, just Professor Sky's record review uh, on YouTube. Uh, if you haven't, if you want to leave like a, I don't know, like a, a comment that says you saw this, listen to this. I'd be psyched and I would respond to it. So anyone who's listening to this who leaves a comment anywhere, I'll comment on that. So that's what I want to plug. If you're listening to this, go comment on one of my videos. Say something like, what should they say? I'll, I'll let you guys say what they should say. A-P-A-A. I mean, <laughs> I've been mean to watch this. That's okay. What they say. <laughs> yes. <laughs> that sounds good. No, 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 they should say, they should say uh, honest Honest brat. That's what oh, I should honest say. Brat. Honest <laughs> brat. I'm an honest yeah. brat. I'm an yeah. honest brat. Yeah. 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 That's good. Then, then you will be like the coolest music uh, media consumer because you'll, you'll be the perfect Venn diagram of this show and my show. So perfect. Fantastic. <laughs> I'm glad my legacy is secure. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Check out his videos. Check <laughs> Check out Sky's prior episodes of this show. Like, they're really good. Like, I, uh, that's truly like those episodes are like, fuck, how am I going to top that? <laughs> like, how am I going to like do episodes better than that? But like, I'm really, I'm really happy to that. That's a, that's a part of the legacy of our show. Um, check out um, Sky's review of Ariana Grande, uh, the new Eternal Sunshine. I contribute a little. A uh, bit to that, um, <laughs> where you have my picture in the back, like oh, yeah. high school, dirty. <laughs> like yeah, <laughs> um, yeah. Check out our Brockhampton episode we did, and uh, yeah, you can follow me at Andrew Ambrose Lee on Instagram and uh, Instagram, and you can follow Harper at Harping About on all platforms, Stenley at Snap a Sten on all platforms, Michael at Lemon Taco on all platforms, uh, the Lemon show Taco at on all platforms. Yep. The show at IBMT LTT on Instagram and TikTok. Uh, Megan Rika Young did our artwork. Uh, Otnis did our theme song. Uh, Patreon coming soon. Uh, I've been meaning to watch that. You know, we'll do a monthly episode. Uh, our first episode is going to be on Death Becomes Her. That's really exciting. That's a great episode. And uh, yeah, just drop a few dollars uh, to check that out, support the show. And uh, Sky, anything you'd like to like just uh, leave the audience with? Um, oh, jeez. Well, was I supposed to think about that during our little no, break no. there? No, no, no. Like, yes. Uh, you, um, yeah. Hey, you know, uh, Proust is great. Yeah, you should really, really. <laughs> it's one of the great reasons to learn French because you get to read Proust. It's very exciting. It's the most, uh-huh. most pretentious thing I could say. Maybe but, the only reason you should learn French. <laughs> Boom! <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> I'm, I'm gonna, I'm actually gonna soundboard. That would make this podcast really good. Yes, I think so. Like, yeah. Yes, yeah. that's that. That would that'll be my fi- my parting word. Uh, give Michael a soundboard. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> All right. Um. Well, that was our episode. Thanks so much, everybody. Have a good day. Click. <laughs>